Hello students, welcome to lecture 32 of this course. In the last lecture, I discussed about principles of NMR. I started with the 1D NMR and I introduced how to represent signal and what are the factors on which signal depends. In this lecture, I will discuss how to get a structure information from NMR. So we will start with a structure determination of organic compounds. Four different features of proton NMR spectrum provide information about a compound structure. And the four different features are number of signals, position of signals, intensity of signals, and the splitting of signal, the splitting of signal. These four features gives important information through which we can derive the structure of organic compounds. I will go one by one to each of the features and discuss the importance of those four features. First feature is number of signals. So the number of NMR signals equal the number of different types of proton in a compound. So if there are four different kinds of protons in a compound, you should expect four different signals. Protons in different environments are called non-equivalent protons and they give different NMR signal, different NMR signal. Whereas the protons in same environment are called equivalent protons and they will give same NMR signal. So proton in same environment gives same signal whereas proton in different environment gives different NMR signal. For example, if you take this case, this is your dimethyl ether, all six protons, three protons attached to this carbon, three protons attached to this carbon has same environment, same environment. So any one of the proton is attached with one carbon and that carbon is attached to one oxygen and again that oxygen is attached to one carbon. So environment of any of the proton which you take in dimethyl ether is same. What does that mean is that a proton has only one kind of environment and so you will get one NMR signal. Now take this case, one chloroethane or ethyl chloride. This three proton has same environment whereas these two proton has same environment but different than these three proton, these three protons. So one chloroethane has two different kind of protons and so you will get two NMR signals. You will get two NMR signals. If we take methyl ethyl ether, there are three different kind of proton. For example, if you see these three protons are in same environment, whereas these two protons are in different environment than these three protons, whereas these three protons again is in different environment than these two. And so you have a three different kind of protons and so you expect three NMR signals, three NMR signals. So number of signals gives you an idea about how many different kinds of protons are present in a molecule. Now take this case, one chloro, two chloro, ethane. In that case, all protons have similar environment and so they will give one NMR signal. In this 
compound whereas this is 1 chloro and 3 bromo 1 chloro and 3 bromo your propane there are three different kind of protons three different kind of protons and so there will be three nmr signal so you see this carbon these protons these two protons the car, the they are attached to the carbon which is attached to a cl group and a c group whereas these two protons is attached to carbon which is attached to two different carbons whereas these two protons are attached to a carbon which is attached to a bromo group and one carbon group so all so these two protons these two protons and these two protons are in different environment and so you should expect three nmr signals in this compound we have two different kind of protons and so there will be two nmr signal whereas in this compound there are three different kind of protons these three hydrogens has different environment in comparison to these two hydrogens and this hydrogen all the three types of protons have different environment but these three protons they have similar environment they have same environment so these three protons don't differ in their environment and so they are known as one kind of proton whereas these two protons also have same environment and so they are called of same type of the same type but in between these two groups their environment are different and that's why they are assigned to different groups in comparing two hydrogen atoms on a ring or a double bond two protons are equivalent only if they are cis or trans to the same group cis or trans to the same group for example if i take this proton this is cis to this chloro group whereas this proton is also cis to chloro group and hence these two protons are same and so we expect only one signal but if you take in this compound this proton is cis to chloro group whereas this proton is cis to bromo group and hence these two proton don't have same environment and so we get two nmr signals in this compound you see this h b basically is your uh, cis to this chloro group whereas sc is cis to ha group so these two protons are different these pro two protons are different and this is different since this h is attached to carbon which is attached to this chloro group whereas these two are these two protons are attached to carbon which is not attached to chloro group so all three protons are in different environment and so we should expect three nmr signals and that's what we get now the second feature of the nmr spectrum is position of the signal which is basically chemical shift of the proton so chemical shift of proton also gives an idea about the idea about the functional group idea about the functional group the most important part about the chemical shift is that the less shielded the nucleus becomes the more of the applied magnetic field it fills and this i have already discussed about the chemical shift in the last lecture why in certain case chemical shift is high why in the certain cases chemical shift is at a small delta value 
the main factor is shielding of nucleus. The desilded nucleus experience a higher magnetic field strength and it needs a higher frequency to achieve resonance. Higher frequency is to the left in the NMR spectrum and towards higher chemical shifts. So, desilding shifts and absorption downfield. Downfield. Protons near electronegative atoms are desilded, so they absorb downfield and again absorb downfield means higher chemical shift, higher chemical shift. So, these are the things which I have already discussed in last class. So, please look at the um, you know content of the last class. So, if you take a proton and if an electron says this proton, then your peak shifts up field. So, that is what it is written that electron says the nucleus and proton in presence of electron around the nucleus uh, basically shifts the absorption up field. If somehow we decrease the electron density, electron density uh, near a nucleus, we are basically desilding it. We are basically desilding it, and in that case, absorption shifts downfield. And again, downfield means higher chemical shift, whereas upfield means lower chemical shift. In last class, I started discussing about factors influencing chemical shift. Again, I will start with electronegativity. The surrounding electron density of proton says the nucleus from external magnetic field. So, if I have electron withdrawing substituent attached to a nucleus, they can be attached to the same or adjacent nucleus. It basically desilled proton and resonance occurs at lower field or higher chemical shift, higher chemical shift. So, if electronegative atom is attached to the carbon to which these three protons are attached, they will take away electrons from the carbon and proton and that is how they desell this proton they desilled this proton and resonance of the these protons happens at lower field and that means they have higher chemical shift. It means they have higher chemical shift. As you go down, electronegativity decreases. When you go down from fluorine to chlorine to bromine to iodine and so less electron will be uh, shifted from the proton and so desilding will be small, desilding will be small and hence resonance will occur at higher field or lower chemical shift or lower chemical shift. And so you can see that as you go down the chemical shift value decreases. In alkene the carbon is attached to R group which is electron donating group and that is why you expect a, a small chemical shift, a small chemical shift. The second effect which we started discussing in the last lecture which affect chemical shift is mesomeric effect. Again mesomeric effect can withdraw electron from the proton or it can enhance the electron, it can enhance the electron, electron surroundings of a proton. If it removes the electron, then we expect chemical shift to be higher. If it donates electron, then we expect chemical shift to be smaller and that is what we see here. If we go from simple 
alkene 2 and alkene substituted with COCH3 group. The CO group is in conjugation with this double bond and so there will be mesomeric shift and shift will be in this direction and so what you are doing is you are removing electron from this proton and so this proton will be in resonance at higher chemical shift at higher chemical shift. In this case when double bond is attached to a lone pair plus m effect will operate and proton is going to have more electron this proton is going to have more electron and so this proton will resonate at frequency which is lower so chemical shift will be lower 3.74 and similarly we can discuss about mono substituted rings here if the ring has ns2 group its lone pair is in conjugation with the double bond and the lone pair is will be if you take this lone pair here then this will go at this position and this will go to this position and so you can see that this is going to be of higher chemical shift and these two are going to be of lower chemical shift since your electron is reaching electron this proton is more electron rich this proton is more electron rich so ns2 has plus m effect and so the protons at ortho and para position are going to be more rich in electron and hence they will have lower chemical shift they will have lower chemical shift again ome has plus m effect and so proton at ortho and para position are going to be are going to have lower chemical shift comparison to a proton at meta position cs3 is electron donating group electron donating group and this has plus i effect and so this proton will be more electron rich compared to a proton at your uh, meta position and hence this will have lower chemical shift in comparison to a proton at para position no2 is electron withdrawing group so it has minus m effect and so proton will be less rich at ortho and para position and so they are going to be they are going to have higher chemical shift they are going to have higher chemical shift so the electron around a nucleus will affect electron around a nucleus will affect its chemical shift value if there is more electron near a proton then it is going to have a smaller chemical shift a smaller chemical shift now here you see the effect of mesomeric effect and at this position comes the benzene ring if I put NS2 then it will go to lower chemical shift I put OME it will go to uh, lower uh, chemical shift uh, whereas if I put NO2 on the benzene ring it will go to higher chemical shift so this is line for benzene ring NO2 is withdrawing electron away withdrawing electron away from the ring so all proton either in ortho position para position or meta position is going to be uh, electron deficient in comparison to benzene ring electron deficient in comparison to benzene ring and so your chemical shift will be high chemical shift will be high chemical shift will be high whereas these three groups NS2O CS3 and CS3 group 
they are donating electron they are donating electron and and so they are going to be at higher chemical shift than benzene they are going to have higher chemical shift than benzene uh, the electron donating plus m effect will be will be more predominant in ortho and para position and so ortho followed by para position is going to be of a smaller chemical shift meta position will be meta will be um, of highest chemical shift meta will be of highest chemical shift proton at meta position is going to be uh, of highest chemical shift among all these three protons among all these three protons same is the case with OCS3 group OCS3 group and uh, you can see ortho para and then meta ortho para and meta uh, so th this is the effect of the substituent on a benzene ring benzene ring now third effect which I am going to discuss is hybridization effect hybridization of carbon will also affect the chemical shift value order of electronegativity as we know that a, a nucleus with hybridization sp is going to be more electronegative than a nucleus which is sp2 hybridized and similarly a nucleus which is sp2 hybridized is more electronegative than a nucleus which is sp3 hybridized and that is because of uh, because of s character so if s character increases electronegativity is more so if protons attach uh, is with sp3 carbon then the proton chemical shift is going to be in 0 to 2 ppm range and some value is given here some value is given here this is for proton attached to tertiary carbon and since so proton attached to tertiary carbon here proton is attached to secondary carbon proton is attached to secondary carbon and among this three you just um, apply the concept of electronegativity and you will understand why this one has higher chemical shift and this one has lower chemical shift this one has lower chemical shift sp2 carbon if we compare between sp2 carbon and sp3 carbon we know that sp2 carbon is more electronegative than sp3 carbon and hence if proton is attached to sp2 carbon then electron is withdrawn from that proton more strongly in comparison to a proton attached to sp3 carbon uh, so we discussed about the substitution effect on uh, substitution effect on proton chemical shift of benzene ring but the very high chemical shift value cannot be explained just only based on electronegativity value of chemical shift can only be explained on the basis of anisotropy the circulation of electrons around benzene ring produces a ring current in the presence of an external magnetic field so there is a circulation of electron in the plane of benzene ring and that produces a ring current in the presence of external magnetic field and this causes the protons in molecular plane to be desilded molecular plane to be desilded and protons above above or below the plane to be silded above and below plane to be silded and so benzylic protons aromatic protons has very high aromatic protons has very high chemical shift it is 6 to 8.5 because they are desilded because they are desilded whereas protons in 
above protons above below the planes are shielded and that is why they have low chemical shift value, low chemical shift value. Similar to aromatic ring, anisotropy also plays a role uh, in uh, double bond, uh, in double bond. So, uh, similar to aromatic ring, there is a de shielding region in the plane of the double bond and thus vinylic and allylic protons are downfield shifted. Vinylic and allylic protons are downfield shifted and this is the value of vinylic proton. Anisotropy also affects acetylene protons. The electron circulation around the triple bond pi system takes place in such a way that protons attached to a triple bond experience a strong diamagnetic field, diamagnetic field resulting in unusual off field shift of C triple bond C H signal, C triple bond C H signal. So, this is unusual off field shift. Anisotropy of the carbonyl group, again protons in the plane of carbonyl group is strongly desilded due to anisotropy of C double bond O and thus aldehydic protons and formyl protons of format esters are desilded and appear at higher delta value. So, if it is desilded then higher delta value, if it is silded then it is going to have lower delta value, lower delta value. So, please keep that thing in mind. Chemical shifts are also affected by hydrogen bonding. So, there is a downfield shift of OH, NH and SH proton if they are hydrogen bonded. So, they will come at your high chemical shift value. Carboxylic amide and sulfonamide NH protons are downfield shifted in comparison to their related amines due to their acidic nature and that is why these NH protons will come at higher chemical shift value. Acidic protons have higher tendency to form hydrogen bonding. Similarly, OH group of phenol and carboxylic acids are downfield shifted in comparison to aliphatic alcohols, aliphatic alcohols and this is your a typical, typical chemical shift value of some of the groups. So, RCO2 H has highest chemical shift whereas, you can see that these values, these amine values C, CH, R, N, R2, these are going to have lowest chemical shift value, saturated alkanes has lowest chemical shift value. Uh, if you look at R2 C double bond C S2, it, it is having higher chemical shift value comparison to in comparison to your this triple bond R C triple bond C H and this is because of anisotropy. This is because of anisotropy. This is because of anisotropy. And then you can see here at alcohol and compare between this alcohol and RCO2 H group. So, this acidic protons, acidic protons is more downfield shifted or higher chemical shift compared to an alcohol proton. It is because of, uh, it is because of they are, they are very acidic, they are very acidic. So, this proton of your aldehyde is going to have higher chemical shift value, higher chemical shift value because of anisotropy, because of anisotropy. So, these are the sum of the values of chemical shift and depending on the value of chemical shift also you can guess or uh, depending on chemical shift of the proton which you obtain through NMR, through NMR, you can tell 
that which kind of functional group may be present in that compound. The third important factor is intensity of the signal and the area under an NMR signal is proportional to the number of absorbing protons, number of absorbing protons and this can also be used to obtain a structural features from a NMR spectrum. Modern NMR spectrometer automatically calculates and plot the value of each integral in arbitrary unit. The ratio of integral to one another gives the ratio of absorbing protons in a spectrum and that is very important. Note that this gives a ratio and not the absolute number of the absorbing protons. So, please keep this thing in mind. But it is important that if I uh, get the ratio of integral, I know what will be the I know what will be the ratio of absorbing protons in a spectrum. So now see in this case, this is your CS3O. C, CS3 thrice, CS3 thrice. Now, if you notice, they have two different kind of protons, two different kind of protons. So, you get two signals, two signals. And now, just based on their intensity, you can tell that which proton gets which signal. So, now here you see this is there are only 3 protons and there is 9 protons here and so what you expect that one if this is if intensity if we normalize intensity this should be in the ratio 1 is to 3. And now you see this is the this if you look at the intensity this is 20 unit if this is 20 unit this is your 60 unit this is your intensity of the signal. And so now you know that ratio of protons having this signal is one third of protons having this signal. So it is quite easy to assign. This is CS3 thrice C and this will be CS3 O. This has three protons, this has nine protons. So uh, uh, it is quite obvious that the signal, signal of this peak will be thrice that of signal of this peak signal of this peak. So, just based on intensity, we are able to assign the spectrum in this case. Now, uh, let us think about uh, this molecule, this molecule. So, this is NS2, CS2, CS2 and CS3 twice. So, this is CS3 and this is CS3. Okay, so 3, 3, 6 and there is 2 proton attached to this carbon, 2 proton attached to this carbon and 2 proton attached to this uh, nitrogen. So, you have a 4 different kind of protons, 4 different kind of protons. So, you expect 4 different signal and these 4 signals are here, these 4 signals are here. And if you look at this intensity ratio, here is the ratio given and this is 1 is to 1 is to 3 is to 1. So, this is the ratio which we obtain uh, from the spectrum NMR spectrum which you obtain through the NMR experiment. And the intensity what you got is in the ratio of 1 is to 1 is to 3 is to 1, 1 is to 1 is to 3 is to 1. Now, look at the total number of protons here. Two to 4, to 6 and 6, 12. So, total number of proton is 12 and the sum of this is 2 plus 3 plus 1. So, 5, 5 plus 1, 6 and if I divide 12 divided by 6, this will give you 2 and so, just you multiply this number by 2. So, equivalent hydrogens will be your 2. So, one equivalent hydrogen go group will 
have two protons, the second group will have two protons and third group is going to have six proton and fourth group is going to have two electrons. So, there are six plus six, twelve protons, uh, two plus two plus six plus two is twelve protons. And if you see the third one, it has a six proton, so certainly you will be able to assign this peak to these six protons six protons because this is almost thrice of other pigs, almost thrice of other pigs. And the others can be assigned based on the, uh, the chemical shift, based on the chemical shift, based on the chemical shift. This B is going to be most off field since this proton is attached to an electronegative atom N electronegative atom N. So, B will be this, uh, C will be this one and since this the proton attached to this carbon and carbon is attached to N C S 3 twice group, N C S 3 uh, twice group which is less electronegative than N S 2 group because this N is attached to electron donating group and so the N C S 3 twice is less electronegative than N S 2 and hence the second will come at uh, this position. Third we have already assigned and fourth since this is attached to and uh, so uh, it is attached to N group directly and so it will come at this position, it will come at this position. So, just based on what we expect of chemical shift value, we can assign, we can assign your this spectrum. There are another characteristic which is the splitting of signal. I just, I will discuss that also that basically ensures that the spectrum is correctly assigned. So, the fourth feature, another important feature of the NMR signal is they split in presence of each uh, other protons and that I will that is explained by scalar J coupling or J coupling. So, if there are two spin, so if there are two spin adjacent to each other, they will split, they will split the signal. To explain this, let us assume that this spin is given by i and this spin is given by s, this spin is given by s and if spin is in this uh, direction then I give this alpha sign, if the spin is in this direction then I give it beta sign. So, the two spins can arrange in four different way, first when both are up in the second one, one is up, another is down, the third one, uh, one is up, another is down and the fourth one, both are down. So, in this, the spin of both i and s is up, in this spin of i is up, the spin of s is down and so, spin of i is given by alpha, spin of s is given by beta. In this spin of i is down and spin of s is up and so beta alpha. These are the four different states. And if the transition happens from alpha to alpha alpha to alpha beta, it means the s is changing sign. So, s is going from alpha to beta whereas, for i the sign is same alpha alpha and that is why this is called S 1 transition. This one is known as S 1 transition and similarly, if you look at this beta alpha to beta beta, beta alpha to beta beta, the change in sign is happening for the spin S and that is why this is known as S 2 transition, S 2 transition. Whereas, if you see 
this transition alpha alpha to beta alpha the spin of i is changing direction it is going from alpha to beta whereas in this also spin of i is changing direction and that's why these are known as i1 and i2 transition i1 and i2 transition so now you can see that we have two S transition and two I transition and that is what we say that in presence of S, in presence of S the I the transition uh, the I transition is split into two part whereas in presence of I S transition is split into two, split into two and that is what is shown here and this is for I. So, this is your chemical shift of I suppose and then in presence of uh, your S it is splits into two, it is splits into two, one is I 1, I 2 and the splitting between these two, these two uh, signals is known as J, J value or scalar coupling. Here you see the S also is splits into two because of presence of I and this is your chemical shift of S and split is in the other two direction and the your this gap between these two value is known as J is your J value or is a coupling constant value. So, the presence of nearby proton split the signal split the signal of protons split the signal of proton so let's uh, talk about some molecule and see how many splitting is possible so take the case of ethyl iodide ethyl iodide and this carbon has two proton, this carbon has three proton, this carbon has three proton and if I look at the splitting of this H A, splitting of this H A due to this H B, H B. Now, think of how, how many levels it will split. Uh, the, so, this is for H A and now you see all H B can be up direction, 1 is down, 2 is up and there are 3 different possibilities possible for 1 down, 2 up. For 1 up and 2 down, these 3 are possible and for 3 down, this 1 combination is possible. So, splitting will happen, the signal of H A will split into 4 into 4 with this intensity ratio 1 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1. This ratio because there is only one combination for all three spin up this there are three different combination for two up one down three different combination for one up two down and one combination for all three down and so the relative intensity of quartet will be 1 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1. So, the signal of H A splits the signal of H A splits into 4 because of presence of 3 H B protons 3 H B protons and that can be converted into rule that if there is a n protons nearby then there will be the splitting will uh, splitting of nearby proton will be in n plus 1 peaks. So, 3 protons are present. So, signal of H A will split into 4 and since 2 protons are present uh, near to this H B protons. So, the signal of H B will split into 3, 2 plus 1, 3 and that you can see here that 
if we go for HB, then what happens that possible spins are combination of both up is 1, the combination of your 1 up, 1 up and 1 down is 2 and combination of both down is 1 and so a split will be in the 3 picks in ratio 1 is to 2 is to 1, 1 is to 2 is to 1, 1 is to 2 is to 1. So, uh, from this example comes what is known as n plus 1 rule, a hydrogen nucleus with n adjacent hydrogen nuclei will split into n plus 1 peaks, nuclei will split into n plus 1 peak. And what does that mean is coupling is with 0 protons, there is no nearby protons, then you will get only 1 peak, so 0 plus 1, 1 peak. If coupling is with 1 proton, you will get 2 peak, 1 plus 1, 2 peak, in the ratio 1 is to 1. If the coupling will be with the 2 protons, the peak will split into the, the proton peak will be split into three different peaks with the ratio 1 is to 2 is to 1 and coupling is with three protons, four peak will result with the intensity 1 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1. Coupling with four protons will result into your five different peak with the intensity 1 is to 4 is to 6 is to 4 is to 1. 1 is to 4 is to 6 is to 4 is to 1. When a proton is surrounded by more than one type of protons in its adjacent carbon, then a conjugate splitting pattern will be observed. A conjugate splitting pattern will be observed. For example, here if you see HA, HB, SC, they are all different types of protons, all different type of protons if the substituents are x, x and y at this position. HA and HC, HA and SC are expected to couple with HB, couple with HB only. And so, since there is coupling of HA with HB and so this will split into two peaks. SC will also be split into two peaks, but uh, interesting is your splitting of HB. Since it will be split both by HA and HC, HA and HC and the splitting will like be this. So, HB uh, this is splitting because of its coupling with A and this is the splitting and now since B is also coupled with C and so these two peak again will split and this is your coupling constant between A and B and this will be the coupling constant between B and C. So, there will be four peaks, four peaks but this is called two doublets or doublet of doublet DD, doublet of doublet which splitting is larger depends entirely on the chemical nature of other surrounding group, other surrounding group. So, ZAB is higher or ZBC is higher, it will depend on chemical nature of other surrounding group. If the coupling constant of the different splitting levels are equal, our DD will appear as a simple N plus 1 triplet n plus 1 triplet. So, look at here, this the second one, the J 1 2 is equal to J 2 3 if you take this molecule, if you take this molecule, this proton is being split by this proton and this proton, but the coupling constant is coupling constant between 1 and 2 and 2 and 3 is equal, uh, coupling constants between these two and these two are equal and that are equal to 8 hertz. In that case, we will get a triplet. 
in that case we will get a triplet. So, uh, appearance of d d depends of on the relative j value and if j 1 is equal to j 2 we looked at this triplet we will get if j 1 is equal to 15.5 j 2 then you will get like this and then depending on the different values you will get different kind of d d d d signal. Now, there is doublet of doublet of doublet d d d signal also present uh, in cases where this happens when one proton h b is split by three other protons split by three other protons uh, h a h c and h d each chemically different from itself a doublet of doublet of doublet pattern is formed each line in final DDD pattern would have same intensity since each doublet itself has 1 is to 1 intensity while splitting. So, let us look here this is the first splitting and then this gets splitted this is the second splitting and this is your third splitting this is your third splitting. So, this is because of coupling between A and B, this is because of coupling between B and C and this is because of coupling between B and D and so doublet of doublet of doublet signal will be seen. Then there is a two bond 2J coupling commonly known as geminal coupling. They are usually smaller in magnitude than one bond coupling. So, this is your geminal coupling and you can see that C is attached to this H and this H and this is known as 2 bond 2 J coupling, 2 bond 2 J coupling and some 2 bond coupling constant are given here. So, between proton and proton you will get uh, this 9 to 15 hertz and these are between proton and D, this is between proton and fluorine is it between proton and carbon, this is between proton and proton attached to sp 2 carbon, this is between 19 f and 19 f and this is between proton and 31 phosphorus. Uh, geminal coupling increases in magnitude as the bond angle alpha decreases. So, this alpha value, this alpha value affects the coupling constant value. Uh, geminal coupling increases in magnitude as the bond angle alpha decreases and due to high electron spin correlation. So, if this is 120 degree alpha is 120 degree then it is 0 to 2 hertz if it is 118 degree then coupling increases to 5 hertz if it is 109 degree then coupling 12 to 18 hertz angle is 107 degree the coupling is 17.5 hertz. 17.5 hertz. Similarly, there is also coupling between three bond and that is very important if you want to get dihedral angle. So, there is a relation between coupling uh, which is for three bond H coupling, three bond H coupling. For example, this proton one bond, two bond and three bond, this proton and this proton, if we can get coupling constant, they can give you the dihedral angle between these two proton. So, Martin Karplus showed that J from vicinal coupled proton atoms depends on dihedral angle between the protons and this relationship can be approximated by the famous Karplus equation and j value is given by a cos square theta plus b cos theta plus c where a, b, c are empirically derived parameters and this is very important if you want to estimate the molecular conformation. Molecular conformation. Today I will stop here because time is over. And in the next lecture, I will discuss about how to get the structural information using three different uh, kind of uh, information. 
four basically four different kind of information i have only discussed uh, i believe three or i have discussed all four i have discussed three uh, fourth is still i am discussing in the next lecture i will discuss about the koji and other 2d experiment which are generally done to get a structure of complex molecules thank you very much bye